by the turtle. Hey. <laughs> yeah, the turtle got me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I was, um, I have a, I've been thinking about the issue of, of gender bias and, and sexism, people's attitudes towards women. And I know there's work to be done there because for example, um, someone on the super chat from your show a while back, I don't know now, maybe a couple months ago or something, they, they asked the question, isn't it strange that Ayn Rand came up with objectivism because women generally are not attracted to reason and logic and something to that effect. Um, yeah. But feminism is definitely not, um, it's got a lot of bad elements mixed into it. And so I wouldn't want to identify myself as a feminist or call a movement to correct those biases feminism. So on the one hand, there's work to be done and, and it's, and it's beyond, it's more specific than just individualism versus tribalism or collectivism, because there's a certain kind of subset of that problem that needs to be solved. Mm -hmm. uh, and similarly with racism and, and, and racial bias. But so what do you think about the, the language to use when talking about something like that? Um, well, I, agree with I think there's a lot of work to be done. Um, I think that I think a lot of men have no concept of how sexist the world was and still is to some extent, although it's much better than it used to be, and how racist the world was and how, um, you know, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's gotten better, but there's still a lot of racism there. Somebody just said, I mean, this is an example. Somebody just says. Name three women scientists. I can. <laughs> I'm sure you can. And by the way, the 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 the, um, the Pfizer vaccine was developed by a woman, um, a Turkish woman in Germany. Uh, so uh, it, you know, it's it's, but it's that yeah. I mean, the people people are thinking in those terms, and yeah. and people don't recognize it. And yes, there's been a shortage of women scientists. There was a shortage of women painters. In the Renaissance and through the Enlightenment, you know why? Because women were not allowed yeah. to do anything. They were literally forced into a role of a domestic servant and a, and a breeder of children. I mean, there's a famous story. There's a, a movie about this. I can't remember the name of the movie about a woman who the only way she could pursue intellectual career, intellectual, uh, uh, is to become a courtesan, is to become a prostitute, basically, because then they left her alone. Then she was mm -hmm. outside of kind of society. And then she could go read and she could paint and she could do the things that she wanted to do. And what a horrible choice, right? What a, what a, what a, what a horrible situation. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there are a few women artists, you find their paintings, but they had a paint in hiding and they were, uh, they, they feared persecution constantly. And their paintings were often presented as being painted by a man and only years and years later was it discovered that they were they were they were female so yes i i think that i think that that needs to be talked about it doesn't have to have a banner it just yeah. has to be uh talk about the fact that uh this is the history and to some extent it's still with us and uh, that the the real place where it needs to be talked about is to young girls uh, mm. particularly if you look at the statistics um Young girls going into, I think, high school are uh, equal to or further ahead of boys in math and science. Mm -hmm. And then they drop out in high school. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they, the number of girls in, you know, involved in, in... And that's... Yeah, the movie is Dangerous Beauty, by the way. The movie is Dangerous Beauty. It's, it's, a, it's worthwhile watching. So those are the goals that need to be encouraged to pursue what really interests them rather than to pursue what certain segments of society thinks they sh should do even today. And, yeah. and you know, the, the reason there are not a lot of engineers in Silicon Valley who are women is because there's just not enough women engineers. Uh, it's not because they're less skilled or less talented. There's just not enough of them on them graduating from schools. Um, and I think that has to do with biases that go back to teenagehood, you know, when we're teenagers. So all of that needs to be worked on and needs to be advocated for without it falling into collective, the trap of collectivism. I don't think it's that mm -hmm. hard. Um, I mean, look at Ayn Rand. She, the way she did it was portrayed female heroes. I mean, 
woman running a railroad in 1957 was pretty, you know, good art uh, and, and just good education. Yeah. Yeah. And also I, but even once I am an, I have an engineering, two engineering degrees. And even once a woman gets into a career after school, um, she'll encounter a lot of attitudes that you can't do it or just assumptions that yep. she's not able to do certain things and certainly not to like be a, a leader in such a field. Um, and so I think that's, that's where it has the most impact in my mind is just limiting people from pursuing the most important value in your life, your career and, and being told over and over again that I know you can't do this. Uh, even if you know, that you can yeah it's, no, it's, it's a it's a horrible injustice you know and, and, um, and anything i would suggest is just and i'm sure you do this is it's just to stand up against it and voice yeah. voice your opposition i think that's the best activism you can and you and you pave the way for you know younger women who are going to come after you i think that's how women got as far as they have today and there is a real part of part of my hatred of the right of the new right of the kind mm. of right you write, is the extent to which they are sexist and racist. Yeah. It's just ugly. The, the, the way they talk about women and the way they talk about, uh, you know, minorities is just, just horrific. Mm -hmm. And it's so reactionary. It's so going backwards um, that it's just offensive. And at least at least the old left, I don't, I don't, the new, new left is all the, you know, women are supposed to hate men and, and, <laughs> uh, you know, all white, all whites are racist, you know, but, but the old left, the, the kind of the more traditional liberals at least really did believe in some sense of equality in the appropriate way between women mm -hmm. and men, between the races, you know, color blindness and, and, and sex blindness when sex blindness is appropriate. Sometimes it's not, uh, but when it is so, um, yeah, it's, it must be horrible to have to deal with that and to know that it's sometimes under the surface because people are afraid to bring it out. So you, sometimes you can't just stand up against them because you don't even, you, you know, they yeah. the opportunity to because it's, it's under the surface. It's usually under the surface because they know better. If somebody just, I mean, every once in a while, someone will just make an explicit comment and then it's like they're giving me a gift because there's something I can really do about it. Exactly. But most of the time it, it, it's not. Um, but but on a related issue, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for objectivism in this. There's sort of a, a subset of I don't know if you'd call it feminism, but there's almost like a cottage industry around supporting women's professional development. Like people sell books like Lean In, for example, by Sheryl Sandberg. That's one of the most notable ones. And it, they're all giving women advice. And, and this advice inevitably turns to things like well, you don't have to just always sacrifice for your husband or your kids or whatever. It's okay for you to take care of yourself. But then they'll go on to say, you're not being selfish if you take care of yourself. And I want to, I scream back at the audio book, like, I am being selfish when I do that. And that's a good thing. But, but in a way, some of this about trying to support women and encourage us to be active in our careers and, and successful is about you can't do that without saying assert yourself and be selfish in some sense. And they try to straddle this fine line of like, be selfish, but call it something else and don't really be selfish, but we still value altruism, but you should advocate for yourself and, 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 and uh, advance your career. <laughs> the whole so, industry is like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, pursue your dreams, but, but don't be selfish. You know? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So it, it's, there's a massive opportunity for objectivism within the self-help world. Yeah, I'm just not sure how to do it, but somebody should do it. I, you know, it's just <laughs> not. I, you know, as I said, I, you know, my viewership and my of my channel drops when I do um, self-help type stuff, and rises when I do economics and politics, which is, you know, not as much fun for me, at least the, the politics part of it. But that's the reality of the marketplace. The marketplace doesn't want me talking about self-help. Uh, so somebody needs to do it, whether it's, I don't know, Gina Golan, or somebody needs to be the, uh, the, the self-help guru coming out from an objectivist perspective. There's a massive, and part of that would be uh, 
to talk about minorities, to talk about women, to talk about what it is to be successful because mm-hmm. and, and how to stand up to you for yourself. Mm-hmm. All right, we got him out. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, remind them. Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing. Whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.